Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jim Jaquetta, CTO and co-founder of Vitovation Corporation. Uh, today, uh, we have my good friend Florian Colmer from uh, one of our key partners, Avi West. Uh, this is uh, uh, the number four webinar uh, we have today about live distribution and content sharing solutions. Uh, Florian is uh, in charge of uh, business development here in the U.S. for Abby West. Um, haven't seen you in person for a while, Florian. I, I look forward to going on the road with you so at some point in the future, I hope. Um, I hope. But uh, t tell us uh, uh, what's going on there in France and, and tell us what, what you're going to talk about today. Oh, quickly in France, the situation is improving now. So things are reopening, businesses are reopening. And we hope the situation will improve in June and, and, and by the summer, be back to normal. So we'll see, but for now, we're still taking some social distancing measures and staying safe. And I, I hope you are all safe. And, and yes. thank you for joining online today um, to this webinar. So thanks for the introduction, Jim. Today, we will talk about uh, live distribution and content sharing solutions, especially over the public internet. Um, so that's the fourth webinar we are doing about the Avi West products and technologies. Um, if you missed the previous webinars, you can watch them online. Um, so don't be uh, afraid or surprised if we are not telling much about our bonded cellular products and our field encoders today. Because today it's more focused on uh, the other end of the workflow for the distribution part. Um, I just want to 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 tell you that you are welcome to ask questions, uh, including during or after the, the presentation. And Jim and I and myself, and probably Jim, if I'm, I'm talking more, uh, will be pleased to answer to you. Yes. So you have a questions panel, you can just uh, write any question. Yeah, uh, I, I'm playing I'm playing the role of produ producer. So I'll, I'll, I'll check yeah. the chats and the questions. So please feel free. Uh, Florian and I set up a little little uh, poll, a little questionnaire, um, just to kind of see uh, where you folks are at, you know, in your in your workflow, uh, in your day to day. Uh, just want to see uh, uh, if how you folks are using, uh, how are you distributing, are you distributing and sharing live content, and if so, uh, what means are you using today? Um, um, you know, are you are you planning on, uh, you know, do you use satellite? Uh, do you use a fiber or, or a managed IP network? Do you use the public internet or an unmanaged network? Uh, do you share primarily online and social media? And, uh, or, or no, you're not really doing anything now, but hopefully plan to in the future. Uh, so it'd be just good to for Florian and I to know kind of where you folks are at. Um, Okay, let me see here. It looks like we got a pretty good uh, vote here. Let me see. And then I should be able to share it. Yeah, so it, it looks like um, actually most of our uh, attendees today, Florian, are doing online and social, uh, okay. satellite and public. Un peeps, like, like a quarter of the audience is already doing unmanaged. A uh, quarter is doing satellite, and, and a quarter is not doing anything right now, but but plan to in the future. So uh, it's pretty pretty good spread. Uh, seems like no one's using fiber or IP networks. So uh, that's inter That's an interesting uh, statistic. So here, I'll give it back to you, Florian. Okay. Um, thank you. So thank you for answering this poll, and let me switch. So just to, to, to show you a bit more about what this webinar will be about, uh, you may already know the Avi West products and ecosystem. So we are doing both contribution and distribution products. Um, today, the webinar will be focused on the distribution part and content sharing. Um, so as you already know, we are manufacturing encoders, uh, transmitters, uh, doing bonded cellular, but not only cellular, any kind of unmanaged IP networks. Uh, and it's relying on our proprietary IP protocol called SST for safe stream transport. I will talk a bit more about this protocol later in the webinar, 
But just to show you here on this uh, large scale workflow, uh, this same protocol is being used for both the field contribution and the distribution and content sharing. So, there you go. Yes, so um, TV stations are, are, and, and video production companies are competing for, for viewers and they need to be able to distribute their content to the highest number of viewers, uh, basically. And it has been done traditionally by satellite or, or, or terrestrial networks. But of course, now we've got more and more online media, social media. And what we are going to showcase more today is how to distribute your live content in an efficient way and cost-effective way, moving away from traditional satellite uplinks and dedicated fiber distribution, which is quite expensive and not really easy to set up and operate. Um, so we are going to showcase how to leverage the public internet and public networks uh, for this distribution. Uh, also, more and more, uh, you producers or stations are going to distribute more content. So, benefiting from our technology, we will show some use cases in which our technology has permitted to some of our customers to easily distribute additional HD channels instead of having to du duplicate satellite uplinks or, or distribution like this. So, it's both about saving on costs, uh, making it easier to set up and, and manage and operate, but also to be able to distribute more content and to more viewers. So that will be the, the focus of, of today. So of course, when doing that, you still want to have a reliable uh, transmission environment. Uh, of course, the idea is to have something professional and broadcast quality, but leveraging the public networks. So that's being done thanks to our SST technology and protocol I've been mentioning a bit earlier. And this protocol is making it high quality, easy to operate, uh, using public internet for live distribution, being low latency uh, and reliable and fully reliable. And then we will show a bit more about some specific features which can be interested for the distribution part is a multi-viewer for monitoring, being able to select which live source you need full screen and, and so on. So what, what are your, you as customers and users usually looking at? You are looking for something to save on cost but being reliable, move to a full IP workflow, and being completely network agnostic to be able to use any kind of uh, public internet connections at your disposal. Uh, it can be, of course, steel fiber, public fiber, for example. It can be uh, satellite still if you want to use satellite, but it can also be uh, long line internet or even cellular networks if you are somewhere with no dedicated long line connectivity. And of course, you want to keep the best video quality as possible or even improve from your existing workflow. And we will show some, some use case of some of our customers thanks to this move to the AVWS technology, they switch from SD to HD or even to 4K UHD. And as a lightweight infrastructure to have it, to manage it easily and save on cost as well. And uh, it be in total autonomy to manage and operate the system as well. Um, to reduce the operating costs and uh, reduce the number of crew you will need to operate the system as well, and that's a big topic now, allowing uh, your support and tech guys to be operating remotely. So, as you, as you guessed, uh, that's a way to move the distribution part to the public internet. So, all uh, the features and uh, technologies and products we are going to speak about today are making use of the public internet, of course. So first thing is we have been designing a robust uh, IP protocol called SST for safe stream transport. 
And we won, by the way, two Emmy Awards for this technology two years in a row last year and, and this year at, at NAB Vegas. We missed that this year, unfortunately. And, and this is the core of all the AviWas products, whereas it's hardware based product or software based or IP streaming in the cloud distribution. They are all relying on this SST technology. So, what that's a, an IP protocol for live video transmission, but it's more reliable and more robust than existing protocols that you might be using already. So SST is embedding a lot of different features and it has been developed internally at Avi West for more than, than 10 years. And uh, here I will show you a bit more about the different features of this SST protocol. First, it's adding quality of service. So of course, there will be a priority on your live video transmission. Um, it's doing packet reordering and the forward error correction. I will show a bit more uh, on the next slide. Uh, it's also, of course, doing bonding. So that's key as well for distribution because you might be fully aware or already using bonded cellular from, for field contribution. But for distribution over the public internet, it might be interesting to bond multiple online internet connections as well. So this way you will save on cost. Instead of paying a high fee for a dedicated bandwidth or a dedicated fiber, you can use a public internet, but that's less reliable. It's more reliable than cellular, of course, but still it's not 100% reliable. So using our bonding technology for distribution, you can bond two online internet connections from two different providers to be sure that even if one is failing, you will still have a, a, a live transmission without any video freezes or, or, or disconnections. So, so, so Florian, uh, 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 I, I, I apologize if you're gonna if it's on the next slide. I have the bad habit of doing this. We get asked <laughs> a lot, what, why, what is so different about SST compared to, you know, SRT or or the new wrist or. Uh, some customers use Zixi. Um, um, I mean, uh, other vendors do ARQ forward error correction. What what is special about SST that that makes it stand stand out as being more robust, more reliable than some of these other uh, transport protocols? So that's a, a good question, Jim, and, and we we got this question almost each time we are introducing every hour, this. Every hour we get this question. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so SST is, is much more uh, powerful than all the protocols like SRT, RIST, or, or, or Zixi you are mentioning. First, because it's doing bonding, so it's the only protocol capable of bonding multiple IP connections together. Uh, you can bond heterogeneous networks, so you can bond uh, online with cellular. So I was mentioning bonding is key for distribution over the public internet because you can bond two online internet carriers together. But you can also bond your online internet, public internet, with cellular. And what's unique compared to the other protocols you have been mentioning is that you can define priorities on networks. So you can say your landline is a higher priority because you don't pay data for that, and mm -hmm. cellular with lower priority. It's not going to switch from one to the other because if you are doing so, the time for the switch and especially to recover on cellular networks might lost packets and take some time so you might have some video freezes so here's a way it's working and design it will use all the connections bonded together simultaneously at all time but reduce uh, data usage and bandwidth on cellular if you define it at a, as a lower priority we got some customers bonding long line and satellite as well well, I, I also think, Florian, a, a big differentiator from my perspective is um, uh, Vitovation has done a lot of at-home production, multi-camera production for uh, with Turner Sports. We've done uh, several high-profile projects. We've done the Ryder Cup. We did a, a soccer championship. We've done uh, two golfing events now with PGA and, and you know, SRT, Wrist, Zixi. Uh, they're not frame, especially over an unmanaged network like cellular. They don't maintain GenLock. They don't maintain lip sync. 
uh, uh, frame accurate lip sync and frame accurate gen lock like you do with that. That's the next step, for Jim. Jim, I was going to explain that. So <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I've been mentioning it's this SSC protocol is networks agnostic, so it can use any kind of uh, IP networks. It's doing bonding, as we have been mentioning. It's doing all the standard mechanism like packet retransmission, so AIQ. It's doing high rate uh, forward error correction. It's a two-dimension forward error correction, so that's more efficient as well. And I've been mentioning this uh, priorities you can define and, and low latency. And, and you're right, as you have been mentioning, and we'll talk a bit more later on that, uh, this SST uh, mechanism is also keeping a full gen lock over multiple feeds. So it might be less uh useful here for distributions and for production because for production especially remy production in which you are doing remote switching between multiple cameras it's key to have a chain lock accurate uh, over multiple uh, encoders and transmitters and that's being done through the sst protocol so it's uh, doing a remote chain lock over ip um, but that's going to be available on the distribution part as well so in case you you are distributing because it's not only being used for program distribution, it can be used for multiple camera distribution. If you are a production company and you are producing feeds with multiple cameras, but you want to distribute the raw cameras to your customers so that each of them can do their own production. So in that case, you're right, Jim, it's, it's very important to keep this genlock information as well. So, What's key as well with this distribution part, and, and we are promoting as a streamer product more and more as a standalone product, is that it can integrate with third party uh, live video feeds. So the streamer product, which is at the center of the webinar today, is the AV West receiver, decoder, and distribution platform. All in one box. Uh, box meaning it can be an hardware box on premises or it can be a virtual box uh, in the cloud it's exactly the same product same features except you are losing sdi outputs in the cloud for sure um, but it's not only capable of receiving sst feeds coming from the avi west encoders it's also capable of receiving third-party live video feeds so you can receive standard mpeg ts rtmp hls rtsp from your video mixer, from your production environment, from studio cameras, from the internet as well, if you want to add some extra feed into your production. So that can be ingested in, in the same streamer platform. So the streamer platform by default can receive up to 16 live feeds simultaneously and then can distribute to 16 destinations as well. So here on this slide, it's showing that it can take ingest and output any kind of uh, protocol. The idea is that the SST mechanism is more reliable over the public internet, but then if you are in a local environment or in the cloud, you can just input or output any standard IP protocol like MPEG-TS, RTMP, and so on. And of course, if you have the hardware-based streamer on-premises, you can decode over SDI as well. Well, you should add too that you know SRT is is an industry standard. It's open source, so you also will take an SRT input and output as well. Yes, and Navi West is is a full member of the SRT Alliance, um, so we are supporting SRT both as an input and as an output. But then SST is key to do transmission over unmanaged IP networks and over the public internet. Um, so. In that workflow for the distribution part, uh, what we are offering with this SST protocol is a kind of a gateway between two managed environments at your studio and your affiliates or the distribution studios or your customers' premises where you can use standard protocol internally or in the cloud. Um, and we are doing the gateway to use a public internet in between. This SST protocol is also fully networks agnostic uh, as well, and it's fully automatic. So you have nothing complicated to, to set up and to configure. Everything is automatically detected and managed uh, by, by, by this IP protocol here. 
So that's all you can see. It can take any IP protocols. Um, one key part as well, as you have been mentioning uh, before, apart from the genlock capabilities to keep a perfect genlock between your multiple feeds, what's key for, for uh, TV stations and producers is to have a fixed end-to-end -end latency as well. So thanks to this SST protocol, you can configure a fixed latency you are defining, uh, depending on the distance you are doing, the latency on the networks you are using, and what you need for your customers as well. And, and the latency will be perfectly fixed and constant. Yeah, it would be very difficult for the talent and, and the production personnel if, if the latency was changing. It, yes. it would be very difficult to, to do interviews, to produce a show. Yes, right. And what's possible as well here with SHT technology is one-to-many distribution. So, of course, with the same input feed, you can decode to SDI, distribute, to other stream up receivers using the SST protocol and stream live in the cloud, for example, on social media using RTMP outputs, for example, or sending an MPEG TS feed to a standard uh, decoder as well. So all of that can be done simultaneously. So I, I noticed, Florian, maybe you'll speak more to this, but uh, vMix has come up a lot in discussion lately. Um, um, I was invited to speak on a panel about at-home uh, technology uh, by Sports Video Group, and there were some uh, um, there were some vendors on the call like myself, uh, but there are also some folks from from the PGA, some folks from Major League uh, Baseball, and the National Hockey League, and uh, they were using vMix tools in the cloud to do some of their production work. So I. I saw that on the slide, so maybe are you going to speak to that, how you integrate with, with some other cloud-type production tools? And I think under the circumstances right now with COVID and social uh, distancing um, and at-home production, uh, how does that all fit into this? Uh, we can speak a little bit about this, but that's not really the subject of today's webinar okay. because we've been doing a webinar about remote production. It's more on the distribution part, but you are right. Okay. Our, our technology is fully designed for Remy production as well. And I, I really advise all the, the viewers and attendees today to have a look at the previous webinar uh, on the video. We have been talking more about that. But as you have seen in the previous slide here, you are right. Um, we have been mentioning Vmix here, but here on the webinar today, it's not about ingesting cameras into Vmix, but it's getting the Vmix IP output of your yeah. program to distribute it either to social media, to your customers, uh, using the robust SST right. product. Right. And yeah, my, also, my question was more about the, the, the contribution or the production side. Today we're talking about distribution, but we were talking about maybe other subjects to talk about moving forward. So uh, yeah, sure. VMIC, VMIX has come up in, in professional sports at home production. Um, I, I listened to a panel on eSports and they were using uh, Grass Valley or the GV AMP, AMPP uh, cloud production tools. So maybe, maybe we'll do another webinar and talk more about that, uh, uh, Florian, integration with other, other third party tools. No, you are right to, to mention this today because uh, some of our viewers today they might have missed our previous webinar right. about production, so that's that's good to to, to note as well. And and of course uh, one of the other uh, feature here and workflow here on this slide is that apart from distributing your live program produced in the cloud using Vmix or, or other cloud-based production environments. Uh, we have many customers, they still need to get an SDI out of the program. So right. when you are producing in the cloud with Vmix and other solutions, of course, you can directly stream to social media using our technology, but you can also get your program feedback in your studio to one of our hardware-based stream up on premise and decode over SDI for in your studio environment. So that's well, one of well, the like, like in, in your slide here, like uh, one of the destination stream hubs could be a cloud, one could be physical with SDI. Yeah. As you said earlier, we, we haven't figured out how to do SDI in the cloud yet. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, SDI out in the cloud. 
we speak a bit later about the differences between the hardware-based remap, the cloud, and, 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 and the way you can deploy it. Very good. So, uh, just just for, for, for those who are familiar or, or not already with the AV West ecosystem, here on this slide, you can just see the full AV West uh, ecosystem and range of products. And it's also key, I think, to explain a bit more on this to understand better uh, where the streamer is being located in this workflow. Um, so on the left side here, you can see all range of uh, AV West encoders, field units. So like the Pro Series, you are probably familiar with, which can be mounted uh, at the back of front and back cameras uh, or in a small backpack. Uh, the Rack and HE Series, which are rack mount based encoders to put in, in trucks, in venues, in stadiums. And that's especially designed for uh, multi-camera remote production. Then you go to small air series to attach on your belt and use with smaller camcorders, especially. Um, those are hardware-based HEVC for 2 to 10 bits encoder. And then you have the software-based solution called Mojo Pro for mobile journalism uh, to use with smartphones, tablets, any iOS or Android device, as well as MacBook Pro. And this Mojo Pro series was the subject of a previous webinar we have been doing. So if you're also interested in mobile journalism, you're welcome to watch this previous webinar. It was a few weeks ago. Uh, you can watch it online. It's already up in our in our blog if you want to check out some of those. Yes. So when, and, and all those encoders are capable of bonding, uh, cellular but not only, Wi-Fi, IP satellite, landline networks together using the SST uh, protocol. So that's the same protocol which is being used from for feed contribution and for uh, live distribution and content sharing as well. Um, then the next uh, step is the streamer receiver, which can receive up to 16 live feeds from any AV West encoder, software hardware based, as well as third party IP sources. That's why we are, we are showing here IP sources. And this stream up can be either in your master control or in the cloud. Let's see exactly the same product. The UI is web-based, so that's the same UI. And then this stream up can distribute to other stream ups, so that's one too many distribution I just showed before, using the SST technology, or it can distribute to social networks using standard RTMP or SRT, for example. You can do IP streaming uh, doing MPEG-TS. And of course, if you got the hardware-based stream up on, in your studio, you can decode to, to SDI as well. So that's more to showcase where the stream up is located. And a bit further in the webinar, we are going to talk about the manager. So the manager, it's a, a, another product we are, we are developing, which is not mandatory in your workflow, but if to start deploying this on a large scale, uh, like you have uh, your stream up on premises, you got one stream up in the cloud for distribution, and you have stream ups in each of your affiliates or remote studios, then the manager on top of that will be a, a centralized management interface, which can be either on-prems or in the cloud as well, which is going to give you more advanced features like geolocation, which is less used for, for distribution, of course, because you know where you are distributing, that's more for field contribution. But the multi-view is key for that to be able to monitor all your live feeds and manage video routing to be able to route your live feed to your destinations. Uh, being able to remotely control the entire workflow is key uh, for, for technical support and, and for management and monitoring. And then you have a, a conference-based uh, intercom system uh, using the C protocol and you got statistics as well. Uh, and another feature which is not mentioned here but we, we will show later is that uh, through the manager it's designed for distribution so you are capable of uh, defining distribution points and have one of your streamer being the distribution one in the cloud and manage the um, final destinations at your customers or affiliates uh, premises. So that's the, the AV West uh, ecosystem. And of course, if you have any question or if you want to, first you can watch some of our other webinars dedicated to the encoders or to mobile journalism. But if you are interested in some of those products uh, for one of your use, use case, of course, you are free to ask questions or, or give us a call or an email. Um, 
So that's the focus of today's here, the stream up. Um, so what is the stream up capable of? First, it's a, a full transceiver, versatile, so you can do IP to IP with any kind of uh, IP protocol. So you can do SRT to RTMP, for example, if you want. It can do IP to SDI as well. And uh, thanks to our Rackmont uh, encoder, you can do now SDI to IP as well, of course. Um, it's supporting HEVC, of course, as well as H.264. It can decode, it can transcode, it can stream, it can record, it can playback as well. Um, and then it can support any kind of uh, formats, any kind of resolution up to 4K UHD and any standards. Um, it's also having a web-based UI to uh, monitor the transmission, to remotely control all the encoders and to configure your IP inputs and outputs as well. Uh, it can manage multiple inputs and multiple outputs. On a single streamer appliance, you can have up to 16 inputs and 16 outputs. And what's very interesting, of course, is, is that you can do all that simultaneously. So you can have SDI in and out, IP in and out with different protocols, routing whatever you need, uh, transcoding with different um, formats to different destinations distribute to your affiliates as well as stream on social media at the same time with the same platform. And on the stream up, you can also generate a multi-view uh, up to 4x4 with the 16 input channels uh, I've been mentioning and there will be a, a dedicated slide on that later. So that's uh, the main features here on the stream up. So we have been mentioning uh, before that the StreamUp can be an hardware appliance in your um, master control, that it can be plugged as well, but it's, it's, it's more advanced than that. You have a few more options. Uh, when we are mentioning the cloud, it can be installed in your own cloud. So we have some customers that have their own cloud infrastructure and their own servers in the cloud. So they are just getting the StreamUp software from AWS and install it on their own servers or we can provide it as a service on a SaaS model, so as a software as a service model in the cloud and host it for you with a monthly or yearly fee. And then the last option, which is more for integration, uh, is that the StreamUp is available as a Docker container. So if you're familiar with the Docker technology, it's a way to integrate our StreamUp product and, and, and features into your existing cloud-based software and solution. So the StreamUp has a fully open uh, API. It's a RESTful API. So it can be controlled by third-party softwares and management platforms as well. And it can be deployed in a Docker uh, container environment. So that's, that's uh, making it fully scalable. And that's the, so the interest of this Docker technology. Instead of uh, running a full instance in the cloud uh, using Linux and, and, and installing a full uh, virtual machine in the cloud, uh, the Docker technology is making it as a small software container just with the software without the operating system. And then using an orchestrator, it can automatically scale and create additional instances of your uh, Dockerized streamer if you want to scale, if you want to move from 16 inputs to 32 to 1,000 if you want, it can dynamically create those Docker container and scale uh, your workflow. I, I should so, add, Florian, too, like when, when we're deploying something in the cloud or a physical server, it's very convenient for me and our tech support people, uh, we can export the settings. So if you have a particular configuration, the way you say you can export, save all your settings, spin up another instance, install another server, spin up another virtual instance, and right. within seconds, all your settings are in there and you're, you're up and running. Right, and with the manager, it's getting uh, a step further because you can deploy configuration on, on multiple stream of servers or instances uh, in, in one shot. And if you're doing a different type of show or a different type of production, you can repurpose, uh, you know, I have my Monday night football set up, deploy those settings. Then I'm doing golf, I, I deploy those settings. 
So that that's right. that's very helpful. Right. And this Docker technology is also for integrating in third-party solutions. So we have been working with companies like uh, uh, Avid, for example, or Dalet, and so on, to integrate our streamer uh, technology directly into the uh, newsroom platforms. So this way, our feed unit can directly uh, feed your Avid or your Dalet or your EBS uh, environment. So that's uh, the Docker container. And then having fully open API is also helping some of our customers to integrate this in, in their workflow and to have the streamer being managed and remotely controlled from their existing management uh, UI. So that can be easily integrated with our RESTful API uh, to tweak, you, tweak your own features and your own functions. So that's um, the different way of deploying our streamer technology. So, in the first case in which you are having the hardware appliance, so it's a one you have a box you are hosting in your master control, you can receive up to 16 live feeds, I have been, as I've been mentioning. You have the web UI, of course, you can decode, you have up to four SDI outputs, uh, you can transcode, you can record, of course, and you can stream over IP, you got up to 16 IP outputs at the same time. And that's quite unique because with uh, most solutions, you will need a different appliance for decoding and another appliance or cloud instance for streaming. Here in, with the stream up, it's both in the same platform. So the, that's uh, I think you mentioned this already, the, the, the transcoding is very important. Uh, yes, the transcoding is very important because now that uh, all our products move to HEVC, you still have a lot of uh, CDN or streaming platforms or decoders that are only supporting H.264. So instead of having an additional equipment to transcode your live feed, those features are built in the streamer platform. And in fact, we have been adding a, a, a layer, meaning you have all your 16 inputs, you can have transcoders or not in between, and a single transcoded feed can be distributed to multiple destinations. So, so that's key with the same incoming feed, you can distribute it to multiple destinations, transcoded or raw, and it can be transcoded in multiple formats, like say you are selling a 10 meg HEVC package to one of your customers, you can do one profile, you are distributing another H.264 3 meg package to another customer, you can do a second transcoding profile, and so on. And all this is done through the web UI, or through the API directly on the stream of interface. And of course, I haven't been mentioning, but, but quickly, and that's especially when you are uh, streaming uh, to social media and to CDN, you can transcode from variable bitrate to constant bitrate and to dynamic resolution to a fixed resolution or from one resolution to another one. Um, when the stream hub is hosted in the cloud or as a software or as a Docker container, as you can see here, it's very similar. Um, you can have up to an unlimited number of inputs, depending how you are scaling the, the workflow, and an unlimited number of uh, outputs as well. You can still do transcode record. You have the same web UI. The only thing you are missing, of course, is the SDI output. So, um, as we have been mentioning earlier, we are supporting any kind of IP protocol as inputs and outputs. So that's the SRT, RTSP, the transport stream, RTMP, HLS we have been mentioning. What's coming very soon and it's being implemented here and it will be released uh, within the few months now is first NDI as an input and an output. Uh, and that's key, especially for, for production and especially sport production. We've got many customers using NDI equipment now. Um, another protocol we are going to support is WebRTC as well as inputs and outputs, the same. And of course, we are going to implement SMT2110 as well. 
And that's also something we are planning for the future and our technology will be perfectly fitted to move to SMT2110 for broadcasters because you are going to use uncompressed 2110 in a local environment, uh, in your studio, for example, or at the venue or the stadium. Uh, but then when you are going through long distance network, except if you are capable of paying a very high fee to get 10 gig or 40 gig fiber between the location and your studio, but that might be overkill and too costly. Then using our SST technology in between over public networks will be a perfect gateway between your 2110 uncompressed at the venue or the stadium, long distance over the public internet using the AV West SST protocol, and then send 2110 uh, as an output in your master control in your studio environment. So, so you so, could use, you could bridge two facilities together uh, with yeah. an unmanaged network because SMPTE 2110 can't go through the public internet reliably. So you would right. you would you would come in SMPTE 2110. Uh, uh, you'd have to do a little bit of compression, variable bit rate, uh, add that you know put it on the SST transport, and then give back SMPTE 2110 on the other side. Right. So that would be the perfect gateway on long distance between multiple. Uh, locations and studio using 2110 and of course thanks to the SST protocol you will keep such unlock information because uh, all the other IP protocols for now they are not keeping genlock and PTP clocking information the SST protocol is already offering this so it will keep it with NDI or, or 2110. That's awesome that's amazing so we've been quickly mentioning uh, transcoding here so the, this feature has changed uh, in the streamer uh, software now and you can uh, split and have your individual transcoding to one or multiple destination you can create multiple profiles as i've been mentioning and that's key for distribution to social networks to your customers to decoders uh, and so on and and that's key because uh, the Ivy West uh, field encoders and field units, especially, are now doing HEVC, of course, in variable bitrate with some dynamic resolution features, and that's usually not properly supported by some of the social networks or some of the decoders. So, in that case, having built in transcoding capabilities inside the streamer platform is making it fully compatible with any environment you are working with. So that's, that's well. Cool. I, I think some some of the competitors, Florian, would be forced to do H.264 from the transmitter, the encoder, and as a result, you're going to use uh, twice as much, or maybe two and a half times, three oh, times the amount of data. Or oh, you will lower the quality. You're right. Of course, you can take an H.264 encoder in the field and, and, and stream live to 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 social media, uh, right. but of Missing HEVC will either cost you more data or reduce the video quality. Correct. And if you are not using those variable bit rates and dynamic resolution features, then it will be less reliable in the field, especially if you are on the move, uh, producing shows like the live PD show, for example, right. uh, and you're from very different cellular environments. Right, right. So that's key here. Um, Another feature we quickly mentioned before, uh, now the streamer for a few months can uh, support a multi-view and can generate a multi-view. So that's, that's key for a number of different use cases. So first, of course, it can support up to 16 channels. So you can do 2x2, 3x3, up to 4x4 four four, uh, multi-view here. What's key is that it can take any kind of uh, video sources for this multi-view, not only the AV West transmitters, but also standard IP feeds and also files. So you can play out files as part of your multi-view as well. So that's key for multiple things. First, it's important, of course, if you want to show your viewers and your audience all your feeds as a background. If you are covering elections and you want to uh, show at the background that you are live for multiple locations, you can generate this multi-view straight from the stream up here. Uh, this multi-view can of course be decoded over SDI and also streamed over IP. 
So let's say you are producing some uh, sport content, for example, with multiple cameras doing remote production, uh, as you have been mentioning. You might be interested in distributing to your customers all camera fees at the same time in a single uh, IP stream so they can monitor um, uh, the production as well and all the cameras. So that's uh, another example as well. Well, and then, this feature has been very important during during COVID. So some of our customers, they they want to minimize the number of people in the control room. So the transmission engineer who monitors the bonded cellular, he's at home. Everything of Abbey West is web based, cloud based. So you you can you can monitor everything, but you need to see the outputs, the SDI outputs. So we map the SDI outputs in the multi-viewer to an IP output and then bring that to the, the operator's house via HLS or RTSP or, or RTMP, correct? Well, that's uh, what a lot of our customers are doing, either locally at the station to watch all live feeds in their office, just using a standard tablet or, or laptop, and watching the multi-view using a standard video player like VLC, for example, or during the, the current situation to stream it back home and watch it on the laptop for monitoring. So a lot of uh, tech guys and support guys during the situation now, they have been doing this extensively and constantly monitor this remotely from home. So that's very convenient as well. And it's built in the stream up server. Um, so, the yeah, next thing is to uh, show a bit more, uh, I've been mentioning that you can do streaming on social media and distribute to your, your customers, your live feed, but what's key, and we have been working more and more on that for, for, for a couple of years now, is uh, integration into other platforms. So, of course, we are supporting all standard CDN and social media like Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and so on. But we are also integrating with uh, professional cloud-based platforms like uh, Easy Live for uh, cloud-based switching and production, Make.TV as well, and as I mentioned before, with EVS or Dalet or Avid. So, the idea is to provide the AWS technology and SST protocol uh, to any kind of customers for any kind of workflow, uh, providing the most robust uh, transmission environment available on the market over unmanaged uh, IP networks without having to bother about, uh, oh, would my network be reliable enough or not? It's always working, uh, it's robust, it's high quality, and it's automatic. And then it's it's fully integrated, and as we are mentioning here on this slide, and you can see the small Docker icon again. Uh, it's a, a funny one with, with a whale and boxes, and uh, it's easier to integrate into uh, third-party platforms. And um, AviWest is agnostic on that, and is integrating this with most of the manufacturers now. So. That's the way, and you can see more and more uh, cloud-based production, uh, online streaming, uh, but what's, what was missing for most of them is to have a reliable way to send your live feeds uh, to the cloud. So thanks to the SST protocol, you can do that, and then we're agnostic and we can integrate using RTMP, SRT, SST, MPEG-TS, and in the future NDI in any kind of you know, third-party production environment and of course as it's mentioned and we talked before it's multi-camera production that's key as well so now we are going to show a, a bit more uh, use cases um, to give you some examples about how you can use uh, this stream up technology and, and, and all those features so here the first example is a 24-7 live distribution from a large news agency um, to all the international affiliates across the globe. So here the idea is that previously, before deploying the AVS technology, they were distributing a single SD feed over, uh, over satellite to the affiliates, and they have been turning off the satellite feed 
last year, for example, in this case, um, to switch to the public internet and saving on costs, making it easier to set up and use, uh, but also switching from a single SD uh, program to four HD programs uh, at a lower cost and integrating into the existing streamable servers at the affiliates. So the idea is that it was very easy to deploy. All the affiliates already own the streamer platforms, and so they were already able from scratch to receive these news agencies' 24-7 programs. So to show a bit more how this kind of workflow is, is, is deployed, uh, the idea is that as the headquarters of your news agency or your master uh, TV stations, you can deploy one of the AVWS Rackmont encoders, uh, either the Rack series being single HD feed or the HD 4000 being four HD channels or one 4K UHD for those already moving to 4K UHD. Uh, sending all those feeds 24 7 to a cloud based streamer uh, hosted in the cloud, then. And this cloud based streamer is used to dispatch your live feeds to all your affiliates. Uh, this way, it's uh, fully efficient, it's using the cloud, and it's not requiring too much bandwidth at your headquarters. And it's highly scalable, of course. And then, using this uh, cloud-based Stream Hub, uh, you have a UI I will show you on the next slide, but what you, I can show you here, if you didn't notice it, is that each affiliate is capable of choosing which feeds they want to receive. So that's being done through the StreamUp web UI um, and, and the manager as well. So in the manager, if you remember, that's another product which is coming on top of the workflow. So here in this use case, um, all the StreamUps and the HE4000 encoders are being connected to the manager as a cloud-based StreamUp and the hardware StreamUps on your affiliates uh, studios. And on the manager, you have a dedicated interface, web-based. One is dedicated uh, for the admin, you at your headquarters. You can monitor all your affiliate stream apps, all the input feeds from your Rackmont encoders. And you can create multiple user accesses. So that's for your affiliates. And they will have a basic affiliate UI in which they can see all your shared feeds their own outputs and they can just with a single drag and drop choose which feeds they want to receive on which uh, SDI outputs in the hardware based stream app. So that's very easy to use and, and powerful. It, so, it's similar to like partitioning a routing switcher, you know, you only give a certain user access to a certain number of outputs without disturbing you know, knocking somebody else off the air accidentally, right? It's it's a it's a, a yes. security or limits access. Yes. So in this uh, use case, the affiliates they cannot stop or start the live feed or, or change the configuration. In the web UI, they just have a small preview picture uh, for each of the live feeds, and they can choose which ones they want to receive at home. Uh, basically, that's that's the way it's it's received. So they cannot. Uh, stop things from other affiliates at all and um, of course it's uh, more advanced using the manager here in the workflow it means you can create groups of equipment so at the same time you can have uh, four feeds for your event a uh, you want to distribute to customer one to ten uh, six other feeds from event b distributed to other customers so you can create groups and you can give the users access to one or multiple groups. And, and that's um, for content sharing, and that's a perfect introduction to the next slide. By the way, that's um, another project uh, using our technology. I can explain you here. Um, that's um, a cooperation of uh, French speaking broadcasters across the globe. So, as you can see, you got uh, uh, the Canadian uh, broadcaster, the French part in, in Quebec. We've got the French public television, the French speaking station in Switzerland or Belgium, for example. Um, and they, the idea is that they wanted to be able to share more live content together. They were already doing that over satellite sometimes, but not necessarily 24 7. 
And here they want you to be able to share all their live content and, and just be able to pick whatever they need in real time, but being able to be instantly uh, capable of picking any live feeds without asking uh, the other stations. Uh, and also to be able to produce content together and shared production. So that's a, a project we, we, we did last year. Uh, or is it working? So it's across the Atlantic here for now, but um, they are maybe adding more channels in the stations in the future. And you can see it's between uh, Canada, France, Belgium, and Switzerland. Uh, of course, it's bi-directional, so they are sharing all of them content together. And to show you a bit more uh, how it is working, of course, it's it's working over the public internet, thanks to our SST protocol again. And the way it's uh, it's working is here. So the idea is that every station is contributing, so they do have an encoder, uh, can be an SDI encoder, or they can ingest uh, any kind of uh, IP sources. It's getting through their local stream hub in their studio environment to a cloud-based centralized stream hub uh, we are hosting in, in the cloud for them over the public internet. And this uh, stream up platform in the cloud is generating a multi-view with all the live feeds. And all the stations are receiving this multi-view plus one channel full screen they are selecting through the manager web UI. So that's the way they are receiving only two feeds, one being the multi-view and one being the selected channel. So that's very efficient because uh, in a traditional broadcast environment, usually what you are doing, you are distributing all the channels full screen to all the affiliates. And if they need the, that, they are generating their own multi-view locally at each of the station. Right. It means you need more bandwidth, it will use more data, it requires more equipment. Here, this multi-view generation is, is, is done in the cloud and it's, sent, it's being sent as a single IP feed. And of course, it's, it's scalable. So you can see, for example, on the slide here, uh, station one might be sharing four uh, live feeds, uh, station two or a single one uh, from SDI feeds, and, and TV station number N can be sharing an IP source for, from the switcher, for example, or the program. So when that's um, a good example about um, uh, the AV West workflow and what you can do with this SST technology, because as you can see here on the rows and red and blue rows, it's both for contribution and distribution. Right. So that's right. also something efficient because the same uh, piece of hardware or virtual equipment in the cloud can do contribution and distribution at the same time, uh, having a single UI uh, for all. So that's um, the last example I was uh, looking to share with you. Uh, that's a live content sharing thing. So it's going further. It's not only, a, I would say, live passive distribution, especially like it was done before using satellite, which you were just broadcasting your live program and anybody can pick your live program that there is no interaction or, or choice uh, whatsoever. Uh, here, it's, it's, it's not only distribution you can pick from, it's contribution and distribution right. to share them right. together. Yeah, every, every news agency has affiliates that not only receive content, but uh, if there's an event in LA, let's say an affiliate is in LA, they may send, a, a, they may contribute a feed, you know, showing riots or looting or protesters in LA back to the network and then the the managing entity will then decide let's distribute this back out to everyone uh, yes right and just maybe one last thing we we, we didn't uh, mention here is that of course in all those you, those workflows you see that some parts are being hosted in the cloud with the streamer but if you remember well as i've been mentioning it can be hosted in your own cloud so we do have some customers that are afraid about uh, sharing content and having some infrastructure in a public cloud like uh, like AWS or, or, or yeah. Azure or one. Uh, it can be on your own cloud if you own one, 
or it can be in your own data center, of course. Um, so we are some of our customers, they are deploying this infrastructure, but the cloud is theirs. Um, some are asking us to host it for them in one of our AVS data center, and some are asking us to host it in a public cloud. So we are very flexible on that. Well, yeah, and some customers want to do both, like like uh, the cloud, AWS, Azure, Google. They're all very reliable, but there have been some denial of service attacks where there was an incident a few years ago, I think, where AWS was attacked by, I won't name names, was attacked by someone. Uh, they were just flooded with requests, to, you know, denial of, not, nothing was breached, but it was a denial of service attack which knocks services out for you know government agencies broadcasters so avi west can design a system where there's a blend of some physical hardware on your premises some cloud hardware in your own private cloud mixed with public cloud so that's a good point you're mentioning jim because uh, we we didn't show it here on this on this slide because it will add too much information on the slide but everything can be fully redundant. So here you can see the stream up in the cloud for distribution and contribution. It might look like as a point of failure here on this slide, but it can be fully redundant. It can be in the two different clouds environment, of course. And the manager, which is on top of that, is capable of uh, managing uh, some of the stream ups failure and automatically uh, switching from one stream up to another. Right. Right. And you can have even a second manager as a failover. Right. So the idea is if you're interested in, in designing a very robust environment with everything being redundant, uh, you can have uh, on one side uh, redundant encoders with redundant SDI sources, redundant power, redundant network by bonding landline and cellular, for example. Some can be uh, powered and batteries as well. Uh, then you can have redundant hardware streamers on your premises, sharing multiple internet connections from different carriers, and the infrastructure in the cloud can be fully redundant as well. So that's uh, that's possible. But if I would have had this on the slide, it would be a, a bit messy. Yeah, we we call that an eye chart, you know, where where you yeah. can't see the the details. Uh, <laughs> very good, Florian. So that's the end for 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 today. Um, if you have any questions, of course, uh, you can ask them now. Uh, I will share on the next slide some of our contact information. Uh, I don't know, Jim, if you have been answering questions during this webinar and if you want to share publicly some of the answers for some interesting yeah, subjects. Yeah, I, I think you're, you're, you've been so thorough, Florian, there haven't really been any questions, but uh, if, if anybody uh, thinks of a question, uh, later on, don't hesitate to reach out to Vidovation, reach out to Florian and Abby West. Um, we we um, we'd love to hear your questions. There, there there's no application. There's no no such thing as a bad question. There's no whatever your application. We, we we're finding new applications every day. Uh, we've been working with Abby West a, a lot of TV shows now because of social distancing. There's a lot of content with uh, Zoom meetings where they'll take uh, two cell phones and a Mac and load Zoom uh, software on it, do a Zoom group meeting, and we're using an Avi West uh, uh, field encoder just as a hotspot, and it's working very well as a hotspot to set up a Zoom call because it's some of these uh, uh, actors' houses Believe it or not, you can be a multimillionaire and still have a bad internet connection. I know in France you guys all have a, a gigabit fiber to your to your flat, but uh, in the U.S. That's another, feature. Uh, That's another feature, Jim. We have been mentioning uh, in another webinar about the hotspot and IP bridge capabilities in yes. in all our products, basically. And that's also a feature which is leveraging the SST uh, protocol, which is not only designed for video but also for file transfer of course, but uh, any kind of IP data, uh, remote control of IP-based equipment like PTZ cameras. But I think we have been speaking about this quite extensively in um, in a previous webinar. Yes, and other webinars, yes, yes. Um, just one so, last thing. 
uh, of course you you can get in touch with with Jim or myself and we we would be pleased to answer all your questions or design a customized environment for for your workflow if you're interested you can also get in touch with my colleagues Ronan with the AWS City One founder or, or Samuel who is our senior product manager and uh, I, I won't stop thanking for designing those nice slides and yes. um, Yes, we couldn't we couldn't do this this presentation without Samuel. Samuel is making the the beautiful drawings. Uh, he made me look really good last week. He made a nice drawing of the whole at home Remy production for the PGA. He had pictures of each of the golfers, uh, the cameras, the plane. Um, so uh, many thanks to you, Florian. Many thanks to to to. Uh, Samuel, and thank you to the whole Avi West team for, for making an amazing product, making this amazing technology. Uh, we're really proud to, to represent uh, Avi West here in the US. Yes, yeah, thank you, Jim, for organizing this webinar. And um, we will be back soon, as now it's uh, the, the final one for our series of uh, four webinars we have been doing over the past few weeks, but we are going to start a new season and organize new webinars on other topics uh, very soon as well. Yeah, so maybe yeah. email us about topics you'd like to learn about. B before we started today, Flori and I were thinking maybe uh, more hands-on, you know, here's what the unit looks like, here's how you hook it up hands-on on the interface uh you can see in the background it might be hard to see i have uh, one of the backpacks i have the small air unit and the 380 on in the background it might be hard to see but we can if you're not familiar with the technology we can do some training online we can do a go-to meeting um also visit the vidovation website there's a there's a spot to request a demo uh you tell us the uh, the type of system you're looking for We'll design the appropriate uh, system to meet your needs. We'll work with Florian. We'll work with the Avi West team, the Vitovation team. And uh, you're welcome to do a demo and try the technology. I'll warn you, though, when you do a demo, a lot of times people don't want to give it back. <laughs> they, they realize how good the technology is and they can't live without it. So uh, if you do a demo, you might be forced to buy the unit because you're going to fall in love with it. So. Uh, thank you, Florian. We hope to see you soon. Um, thank you, Jim. I was looking forward to maybe seeing you at IBC, uh, but I guess that's not happening. Uh, maybe we'll we'll see each other at NAB New York if if, if that happens. If not, we'll look for Florian and I on on, on future webinars. Uh, thank you for attending today. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Stay stay healthy. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Florian.